Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Fauquier County Public Schools with another edition of One Heart Question. Uh, this week's hard question comes from Sarah who asked the following. Uh, actually, it's two questions. Uh, this is following a kind of a lengthy email about uh, teacher lecture and uh, the propensity that some of our teachers have uh, to lecture uh, quite a bit as opposed to doing other inst things instructionally in the classroom, which I'll talk about in just a second. But uh, here are the two questions. What do you suge suggest I do to help my children survive classes where uh, it's primarily lecture? And two, what is being done to encourage or insist that teachers do not lecture for 90 minutes with limited other activity during class time? Uh, thanks for the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, a very good question. And uh, I'm going to wax philosophic here j just for a minute. You know, we traditional instruction, especially at the high school level, has typically been uh, lecture. And I look back on uh, uh, my experience as a high school history teacher, and uh, you know it was heavy on lecture. Um, what we need to do, per your questions, and what we've been trying to do here, is sort of provide the freedom that teachers need to do other things instructionally in the classroom that appeal to different learning styles. And that takes a lot. That takes a lot of trust. Uh, it takes a commitment to a philosophy that um, the, the other forms of instruction that are more creative and whatnot, they can still address the standards that need to be taught. doesn't necessarily have to always include instruction. Uh, and we, so we're responsible as administrators for providing the staff development that's needed for teachers to do that. And two, and more importantly, the freedom that they need. Uh, because what we've done here, and this is the philosophical part, what we've done in this country, not just Fauquier County, is this. We are so heavily, have our arms wrapped around uh, standardized testing, and there's, there's immense accountability towards schools. And I dare say there's not another public institution, agency, organization, anywhere that is subjected to the same level of scrutiny and accountability that public schools and public school teachers are. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go online and read about great judging schools, grading schools, grading teachers. Um, it's it just it doesn't seem to ever end. So um, having said all that, we still have a responsibility to provide that staff development and that freedom and, and um, a confidence and trust that uh, we are, we are okay and we we think it's beneficial to students whereby they are exposed to several different sorts of um, instructional strategies, not just lecture. But what's happened, as I mentioned just a second ago, what's happened in this country all over is this fixation on getting the stuff covered. You know, coverage is the enemy of understanding. Important phrase there. Coverage is the enemy of understanding. And But what teachers are, are feeling pressured to do is cover that material so that they're prepared for that test. And the best way to feel confident that you've covered it is, for, in, from a teacher's perspective, is I've said it to them, I've lectured it to them, I've written it on a board, they've taken notes, so they've got it. But but there's other ways for them to get it. That's really my point. And so we've, we've tried to promote this. This is something I've said frequently. It's something I've shared at convocation with teachers. But it's it's we we have a whole got to understand we have a whole generation of teachers, administrators, students who this has been this has just been the way it is. This is life. This is the way they've been indoctrinated in in undergraduate school and um and in in my indo you know administrative indoctrination program. It's you know it's all about getting those test scores and making sure that we got the right you know, planning in place to cover material. And to break away from that, Sarah, is difficult, and it's proving to be more difficult than had previously been thought. Fortunately, what we're seeing in Richmond now and nationally is a, an understanding on, on the part of politicians on both sides of the aisle who get this, who get that, hey, we need to back off the, the, the reliance on you know, 12 standardized tests to, to figure out well, if kids are learning or not. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a good determination if kids are learning or not. It's just we give it to them, they remember it for a while, they take a test, and then they go home and they forget it over the summer, you know, after swimming for a couple months. So we, we've got to break away from that, and it's, it's proving to be more difficult. But the good news, as I've mentioned, is 
the politicians are getting it because they're you know minimizing or, or reducing the number of tests they're talking about different ways of assessing students authentic assessment project-based learning things like that so the conversations are good but we still have a ways to go and this what you mentioned here is not is something principals know very well they understand this issue extremely well uh, and and I, I think there, there's some frustration there as well but it's it's going to take time and if it makes you feel any better, I got a son, a freshman in college, who complained to me this past weekend about all the lecture in his classes. So, you know, I, that is that is part of it. But the fact of the matter, these kids aren't in college; they're in high school. So, uh, different animal entirely. Hope this helps. Just want to remind folks that April is the last month where I do one art question, and after April, um, we 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 take a break until the fall. So just wanted to let you know we only have about three weeks, three more one-hour questions, and um, we're done for the school year. Thanks. Have a good.